So I got this question of how to translate the word poor to Korean, as in poor something, water, some material thing. And I thought this is this looks super interesting. So <clears throat> let's dig into it. But I think the most generic form of poor would be da 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 da. <clears throat> what you would normally think. So da 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 is pretty much what it says here: poor liquid. So you have the cup. There's water inside. Now, there's some restrictions to this verb. Uh, so da da da. Or my handwriting. It requires. It requires a container from which the liquid is coming out. It requires a container into which it's going into. Now these two words don't need to be in the sentence, but in the pro in the phenomenon they're describing, they need to exist. <clears throat> a smaller cup and bigger vase, typically. So that's that. Uh, what else do we have? Now let's go over the other ones. Sota. Oh, this is easy. Sota and soda jida are both here. So sota. Uh, there's some other second. Butta. So, uh, um, Sota. There's a couple things going on now. Now also another thing with that is, well okay let's go with sota. So sota one thing is you'll normally use it for when it's an accent or it's involuntary. Accent voluntary uh now tarada would be liquid only liquid but sota can be anything that is contained so a bunch of marbles for example sota water sota liquid and the visual imagery is that this will come this will fall and there's nothing because it was involuntary there's nothing ready to be here so it'll be a big splash that's a standard vision image. Now, burul te sota. I don't think I don't think if you do it on purpose, you could use sota. I think that's what's going on. So I don't think it, it needs to be accidental, involuntary. Yeah, spill water. There you go. In English, it says spill. Perfect. Oops. Oh. Uh. And it's not uh, okay. Next, we have sorajita, which is the same verb, I think. It is the same verb. Uh, the only difference is this is passive. So, um, <clears throat> for it. So, sodajida is passive, meaning there wasn't meaning there isn't someone who's a conscious being, <laughs> like a human or something, that is doing the pouring, the spilling. It it has been spilled. Uh, and the same uh, same rules apply as well as that rules. Now this person could have accidentally tipped something, and uh, like tipped the jar, and the things inside the jar could have been spilled. And in that case, you could have used so because 
the person was not touching with their hands, which are the moment it tipping moment at which you con you'd consider that jar to have been spilled, which is <clears throat> if you. <laughs> Uh, we're probably getting too much into the details, but here's your hand. I'm trying to differentiate differentiate sota and sotajita. So here's your hands. Here's the jar. Oh crap! What just happened? Here's your hands. Here's the jar. And uh, if you touched the jar up until this point, and here's a table on which, if you're touching the jar up until this point, and then it fell. You call it sodajida, because you are not touching the moment it fell. What moment will be considered to have fallen is something like there is like here, and the marbles are falling, are starting to fall. If your hands had been on the jar up until this point, you could call it sota, because. Your hands were part of it. And uh, yeah, so like if your parents were saying, oh my God, you broke the jar or whatever, or you spilled the marbles and the marbles were expensive and you're trying to avoid responsibility. If this is what happened, you could say, well, so they just saw not my fault. I, I, I did tip the table, I tipped the jar. I didn't carry all the way, so you could try to defend yourself. If your hands were like this for some reason, I don't think you could say that's what I just said. Like if you're reviewing a video recording of this and parents were like, look, your hands were on the jar up until the last minute and you did not grab it to make sure it wouldn't fall. It's your fault. If you say so that they'd be like, you're lying. Right, so that's sota and soda jida. Uh, what else do you use here? There's something interesting. There. Butta. So butta. <sighs> so the many ways is similar to tarada here. Oh, there's something. It keeps getting deleted. My one. It has some synchronization problem. Uh, there is. So you're pouring, so it can be used in the same way, you're just pouring. Now in what ways it will be different? Uh, if you're carrying a large, like a human sized jar, here are you, you're carrying like something, you know, some, some jangdo. This whole human sized jar is filled with wine. You're pouring in another human sized thing. And you're like barely carrying this. It's very heavy, very, very large. This, you. Tarada. Yeah. I don't think you could call this Tarada. This needs to be Puta. Um, why? I think you use it when the amount of liquid that you're pouring is large. So this would be putta. Uh, we had the example about the salt. But... Ah, another difference between tarada and putta is tarada can only use it for liquids. But putta can use it for liquids and uh, things like salt or sugar. Grainy things. Putta. Uh, don't put the flour. I put the grains of uh, wheat. I think you can. I think you can put the rice too. Okay, great. So, <clears throat> anyway, so what are we doing? Oh, the small pieces. So, if you're uh, pouring salt to a hook, broth you're making, And if you grab a handful, your hands grab tiny bits, and you have you are controlling with your fingers, and you carefully uh, drop it into the soup, and you 
heating it and making sure it's the right amount of saltiness. Then this would be Pokemon Lota. You're just putting it in. However, if instead of controlling the amount with your hands, you got laser, you had no experience, and just brought the salt back. You cut the salt back, you're slowly pouring it. You're hoping to cut it, cut the flow when you feel it's enough. And oftentimes what happens is you tilt it too quickly, and um, a large amount just goes into the, the soup. And in this case, you fail to control it, so you call it Uta. I could help, I, it just happened there, the salt was overboard. We didn't care. I don't care how salty it becomes. I don't have time. I'm just going to pour it all or something. You know, just eyeball it, wing it. Um, so in that case, you'll call it. Uh, did I cover everything about putta? Large amount of grains. Saral putta. Saril pude chero putta. Yeah, you can use that. You could use it for salt, you can use it for cement. This kind of makes sense. Um, uh, yeah, so, yeah, and again, like you ate ramen and you ate, grab all the noodles, and there's the soup left. You just pour the soup down the drain. That would also be put. You'll not be that because you don't care how it lands. You're just throwing it away, you know. You're not like aiming at it, or you're not trying to control how how fast it goes. You're just pouring it all away. So because there's an uncontrolled aspect, all put. Right. So we're gonna go to another one. What else is going on? Sota. Yeah, sota, sota jita. Uh, something interesting about soda yeah, so it talks about the sunshine. So yes, it is used uh, poetically because people, yeah, people need to have a, a, a certain poetic. Uh, poetic the, the sunshine. I open the curtains and 그리고 햇살이 뭐 방안으로 쏟아져 들어왔다. And um, I think in that moment, I don't think, yeah, flooded in English, it's saying sunlight poured, it's flooded into a room. Yeah, that's what it was. So you are comparing the sunshine to a liquid, saying, look, this bright liquid, as if there was a flood, came in into my room. You know, it's, it's it's a poetic expression. You could call, you could use it for other things too. Is it Sodajimda? There must be the other meanings must be here. Like there's a wedding. Oh, they're all here. Yeah, uh, yeah. All this. Thing. Yes, this is what I was talking about. The big applause. So this number four, the number four examples about uh import the goods are pouring or the boss is pouring in again uh, there's a, at a metaphoric level you are comparing these things the imports or the applause to a flood like there's a large amount of this liquid outside of the defined area which could be a country or it could i don't know about the big applause but um maybe the concert stage and all the applause all that uh, imported goods that um, that were kind of held back by some barrier, the barriers broke, the levees broke, and they're coming flooding down into the inside. So that's you can describe it. And, you know, all these are poetic expressions. So people usually use it in written form only when they want to be fancy or when they're feeling very moved. Not really in every. Uh, Unless they're, they're super fancy there, people are not going to be able to manage it, manage using this spoken speech. Uh, yeah, all these things are also like, it's the metaphoric level of 
Something was held back and they're pouring in. Uh, so that's Sodajita. I think Piga Sodajigo Ita, this is used more commonly in spoken speech. People will have no, will not be ashamed of using this. Even in spoken speech. Is. Although, uh, you'd, also, you'd only use it when you are speaking in a contemplative voice, not in an active voice. So what I mean by that is, um, if it's pouring down the rain, it's pouring. If you're in the middle of it, and you're trying to grab a cab or something, talking to someone, hey, it's raining, it's pouring down, let's run. You then say, oh, 비가 쏟아지고 있어요, 빨리 갑시다. Because the, the word itself, so it was too long. Oh, 비가 너무 많이 오네, 빨리 갑시다. And uh, you don't have, you are in the, mic, in the thick of it. But if you are in a building, inside a roof, on the roof, you're like looking down the rain, then you could say, because you're contemplating it, say, oh, 비가 쏟아지고 있네. Yeah. Right, another pour. Oh, Kionta. No, let's go with Kionta first because uh, it's more physical. Kionta. So Kionta is, let's see, what does it relate to? It relates to. Putta. I think it's an advance, it's a more specific form of Putta. So putta, as you saw, it's when you're pouring a large amount. Kionta um, is <laughs> uh, it implies so here's your cup, it's a liquid. I think you can only use it with liquids. It assumes there's a solid object. The solid object over which you're pouring the water. Water, I don't know, I'm just imagining it bouncing. So there's there needs to be a solid object. Um, and that solid object normally would be specified in the sentence itself. Let's see if the dictionary yes, pour water on over. There you go. Yes. Well, I don't know why <laughs> this is, I can think, but I can think of two dogs going at it, Wink. one dog, two dogs going at it. And you are the owner of the dog and you go, oh my God, what's going on? My two dogs, I mean, my dog is, uh, I don't want my dog to have babies. And you just pour cold water on Pagaji. Like this. And then the dogs will run away. They get scared and run away. <laughs> so in this situation, you'd use Kionta. And there's some nuances that are included in the word that are, are part of the course for this occasion, which is one, there's a solid object, which is a dog's. Two, um, uh, it's sudden and violent. Uh, the water was poured violently. So that will often be the case for Kionta. Uh, and it was done on purpose. Also, uh, yeah, here are some metaphoric uh, uses of that. Cold water on someone's ideas is an expression that gets used often uh, in writing, in written form. Yeah, it fell silent as uh, someone had poured cold water. Again, another expression that gets used very often uh, in written expression. Uh, ah, in public bath, when people are washing themselves. Okay, sitting here, the public in the Bogutang. They're like, oh, Shionata. They uh, pour some, put some water in a pagaji. 
Why do we use bagaji? I guess because in the old days there's no shower heads. There's only you could only get, oh wait. only get water that way. So you just pour it on, on your back and just try to scratch your back. Wash yourself. So that's a kionta. Uh now social kionta, you're not pouring it. No, you're pouring it on, on solid. Usually in a solid. But they're not liquid. Alright, shadow hago it. There is a hancha for it. Um, I think the hancha for this will tell us. <coughs> will tell us. I think it will show us uh, graphically. So one thing about the shadow is it's a hard, it's a more advanced word. It's clearly hancha based. People will use it less. Again, unless they want to be pretentious. Just trying to find what the original hancha each word means. I think that will help us explain the nuance of this. Oh, here, here. Oh, the shape part is too key. Oh, knife. <laughs> Kill knife. Uh, um. Yeah, I need to think more of this. Let's just go over what it means. Uh, normally, the imagery that you're thinking of Sedohada is this. There is a place, an office. There's a there's another place. Maybe you'll make this an office. This building. Make this a house. <clears throat> so there's a place A and a place B, and a space in between. The road. Shadowada uh, conveys that there are many things coming from many A places that are coming all to be, they're all coming and um, they're coming quick and they're coming in large numbers so it's overwhelming um, that's the visual imagery of Sedwate uh, so to be flooded, inundated, correct we're getting a lot of phone calls, we're getting a lot of inquiries See, all these things are external, so I guess to, in order to come, you need to be elsewhere. It's going to be external. Uh, all these external things, and uh, there's many things, and they're in an uncontrolled fashion. And oftentimes, it's, unless it sells orders, it's not a good thing. So that's one meaning. Hmm. Used in soccer, soccer commentary. Very rushed towards. 
No, I haven't used it. I haven't seen it used in this way as much, so I can't comment on it. It does sound a correct form of. I'm a little confused how this imagery, the second uh, definition, is not as doesn't seem as related to the first definition's initial image. It's interesting. Um. So I think that's that's all. Oh, tributa. <laughs> oh. Okay. So there's a. There's some others here. Let's see. So there's some verbs where we had the putta, and a modifier was added to the putta, such as pabuta, tributa. They are in the same vein. Now, jiobuta, I never heard. Never heard, so I can't comment on it. It says pour into it. sure. Yes. Aruda we did. Aruda we did. Yes, and I said down there it's um, when you're pouring alcohol, alcohol, alcoholic drinks for your friend or superior. It's typical Korean drinking. Yes. Which I don't know, included the controlled movement and all that. Let's see. Pabuta and tributa. Ah. Okay, pabuta. Uh, I think. I think pabuta in a sense is similar to sodajita. Well, sodajita is passive. Pabuta is active. Uh, so maybe it's just the active form of so like sota, the sota. Sota. The difference between Sota No, Sota Chita is not really just the passive form, there are some other nuances in there. No, 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 it's exactly no, just the uh, nuances are added by culture control. So, Sota is very similar to an active form of the culturally formed expression of sodajita. Now, uh, there are some differences in that pabuta is again violent or strong, fast, uh, not fast, strong and violent. Um, so, uh, the rain, then Criticism, curses, and uh, <clears throat> for both the rain, when you say the rain is uh, it means there's this uh, thick uh, drops of water that you can hear. You can hear the that uh, you get in the summer in Korea. Uh, that's the pobukuita, and it's, you can like if you're out there, you can feel the rain hit you, so it's that strong, and and it implies there are all these like drops, like thousands of thousands of drops falling down, and in the same way, uh, this uh, criticism or so or so is in in the same way with the rain. There's strong, a lot, and fast. So all that is implied here. So when you're saying inanna pobukuita. To talk about multiple people like a dozen, like a dozen or thousands of people all criticizing and yelling at someone or something. Okay, it's used with uh, guns as well when you're establishing a 
Come on, guys, come on. A fire. A rain of fire? A rain of. Like in the movie 300? <laughs> when the. When Kerkis, Kerkis said our arrows will cloud the sun. So that thing is the imagery of shooting weapons. Pabuta. Again, similar vein to the rainy and so that type of Pabuta. Why am I not drawing anymore? Uh, what else? Tributa. Tributa is what this denotes is uh is similar to what where do I say it's pouring into something? Tarada? Tarada or Puta. So both Tarada and Puta. Uh the imagery is the liquid is coming out and going into another container. Now Tributa use it for this. Yeah, you could use it for this. I think there's two things going on with Tuributa. One is uh, similar to Sota, that you're pouring a lot fast that you could use for Tuributa. Or you had trouble carrying it, like it's a big jar, a human sized big jar. Another thing is, I think, that you need to aim really good. So maybe you're using a flask, pour it into. No, maybe like a lap a flask. Pressing this, pouring like acid. And in this thing, because the liquid, or maybe not even like this, but maybe it could be sp spiraling a flask. Those exist. They exist. This, and uh, you're pouring into. They're pouring the liquid, the liquid will need to travel this solid structure to fall into its final destination. And uh, this idea will involve tributa to aim into that hole. And there's a solid structure that is going to, and that solid structure is not a simple container. In that case, you use tributa. Let's see if that's included in this definition. Uh, wasn't. He's talking about the violent and fast a lot. Aninga. <laughs> Not sure anymore. I think it's there. I didn't know that that would exist. Great. So that's all. Oh my god, it took a long time.